I'm sure you all will agree with me that as educators, we have more fun creating these engaging, colorful content for our students. While we are still learning how to make our Canvas pages interactive and engaging, in today's session, I will be showing you how to create these fun shadow text boxes inside our Canvas pages. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Hey, my name is Bhavani Kola. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, this channel is all about educational tools, tips, and technology. So if you don't want to miss out on all the fun, please make sure you subscribe. So here I'm in my Canvas page. I will go ahead and toggle between the rich text editor and the HTML. My goal here is to create those shadow boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and paste the code, and I'm going to show you what happens as soon as I paste the code. Boom, here I have a yellow box with a green shadow in the bottom. Again, I will paste the code in the description box without the less than greater than signs because YouTube does not let me put in HTML code in the description. Now that we have pasted our code, as you know, I would love to explain what this means. So let me go ahead and talk a little bit about this code. If you have been following my videos, you know the div stands for division. So I'm creating a division. The first one is your shadow box. So the first division that you're creating is your shadow box and the next is your text box. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. Division, again, you're creating a division, you're telling HTML, you're styling it and you're giving a margin of 20 pixels. Now you can if you want to or you don't have to. I like to give a margin of 20 pixels because I want my text box to stay in between. And you know by now, background simply means a background color. Now, if I don't give, let me go back and show you really quick. So as you can see, you have space all on all sides, left, right, bottom, left, left, right, bottom. Yeah, left, right, top, bottom. Yes, top, right, left, bottom. So you have margin on all sides. If you don't want the margin, all you have to do is go back and delete the margin here. I'm going to copy it in a second and delete it. And now when I go back, there you go. There's no margin to the left, no margin to the top, but there's a shadow in the left. But I like to keep it centered. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the margin. But if you want to specify margins for each side, you can. So the first one will be your top margin. The next one is going to be your right margin. I'm just going to say 30 pixels. And the next one is going to be your bottom margin, which is going to be, I'm just going to say 45 pixels so you can see. And the last one is going to be your left margin. I'm going to have it as one pixel so you can see. There you go. Now, uh, if you want, all you have to do is go back. And again, this is top, right, bottom, left. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 40 pixels so you can see how the left margin changes. There you go. It moves all the way to the right, giving itself. But I like to go ahead and assign a same margin for all the sides of the, the shadow box. So I'm just going to leave it as 20 pixels. Again, this is the background color. You know, I always like to look at coolers.co for the colors. Here is all your colors. Now let's go ahead and change it to this gradient color. I'm going to go back here, delete. And I'm going to paste it. Remember, when you paste a hexa code, you have to make sure there is a hashtag. And now let's go ahead and take a look. And as you can see, the color has changed. And if you want to really look at the difference, instead of this color, I am going to name it light blue. When you're spelling your colors, you don't have to put a hashtag because HTML knows. But let me make sure HTML knows light blue. Oh, there you go. It does. So there you have it. If you want to create a border to your shadow, you can. By now you should know, all I have to type is border, colon, first is the size, two pixel, next is the style, I'm going to say dotted, and then is the color, I'm going to say black, and semicolon, and there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look. And now my border also has a dot, now my shadow also has a dotted border. Now let's go back here to my HTML. I am going to delete the border. If you want, you can go ahead and keep it. I don't want the border in the shadow. I just wanted to show you that is an option as well. Now, the next one is your text box. This is your text box. So again, you are asking HTML to style it. And this position is a relative. 
That means the text box automatically adjusts itself to a shadow so it can look like a shadow. So let me show you what I mean. If I take off these top and left, I am going to go ahead, copy it, delete it. Let me show you what happens to the text box. As you can see, you don't see a shadow. So you know that placing that reference is telling HTML to make sure it is positioning itself negative 20 pixels to the top and then left 20 pixels. Now let me go ahead and show you if I don't give a background color probably you'll understand that better. So let me copy this one and delete it so you can see how the text box adjusts itself. As you can see this is the shadow it is top it goes top negative 10 and then left negative 20. I think negative 20 to negative 20. You can always go ahead and play with these. I'm going to go back here instead of negative 20 I'm going to say negative 40 in the top so you can see there you go it goes all the way to the top so it's adjusting itself with respect to the shadow box again this depends on how wide you want your shadow but I'm going to leave it to negative 20 and there I have it now let's go ahead and give it a background color don't forget your padding padding is very important so you're telling your text it has to be nice and snug inside those borders so i added a background color now let's go ahead and see if the color popped up there you go that's the background color again use your coolers.co pick a beautiful color that you like i'm going to go ahead and pick this color i don't know the name of that color i'm going to go back hexacode i'm going to change it and now let's take a look there you go I think the previous one was better. And now the next one is the border again. By now you should be very familiar with borders. If not, please go ahead and take a look at the previous videos. So here's the border. You have two pixels. Instead of solid, let me change it to double. And instead of black, let me change it to red so you can see. And I'm going to change the width to four pixels so you can see the difference. And there you go. I have a double border with four pixels and red color. So that's how your whole text, uh, your shadow boxes work. Now I highly recommend, I highly recommend copying the code. Decide how many text boxes or shadow boxes you want. Go ahead, copy the code and let's go ahead and paste it. One, let's say you want three shadow boxes or three text boxes. Here you, have, here you go. I have three or four of them, three right now. So I copied and pasted and here is where you can go ahead and paste your text. And there you go, depending on how you place your text, your shadow box automatically adjusts itself. There you go. And if you want to delete it, just go ahead and delete it. So I highly recommend doing this instead of typing your text and using your shadow boxes. This is the best way. So once I have my text, once I have my shadow box, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and place my text. So that's a long shadow box. This is a small shadow box with maybe one line. Or maybe if I want to put in a picture here, I can, I'm just going to put in a picture of a lazy dog. There you go. Inside my shadow box and I'm going to adjust the picture. So I have a picture inside my shadow box as well. Now that we have seen how to create shadow boxes, now let's go ahead. You always know I like to kick it up a notch. Now let me go ahead and show you how to create this circular shadow boxes instead of square. And let me also show you how you can change the color to gradients. Again, if you are having difficulty with HTML coding, the previous video, which I'll be leaving a link here or here, has HTML coding and detailed explanation of how to change to gradient colors. So now that we have seen all of this, let me go ahead and delete. So I only kept three shadow boxes with minimal text so you can see what's going on. Now let's go back here. So the first one is light yellow and blue and again I'm going to go ahead and pick different colors and change the background colors so the first one is the background of the shadow so I'm going to go ahead and change it to dark blue I'm going to go back and pick I'm randomly picking different colors and all I have to do is go ahead and paste them and again, when you place a hexa code, don't forget your hashtag, which I just did. Did you enjoy the video so far? If you did, please make sure you subscribe because I will be making many more fun with canvas videos just for you. 
So I went ahead, changed the background colors, gave myself some space so you can see what I will be doing here. Now you've seen how to change the background colors, the borders of the shadows, and also create different foregrounds as well. Now let's go ahead and see how to change the width of your text box. So as you can see, this is wide. So maybe you don't want it that wide. You want it, uh, you want a small text box. You can do that by simply going to the first. So let me zoom in here going to the first division style and defining your width, W-I-D-T-H, and width is, you can say, 600 pixels and see if that works. So let's go back here and let's zoom out. And as you can see, the first text box is 600 pixels while the rest of them are not. If you want to make it smaller you can change it to 400 i'm changing it to 400 right now and it becomes much more smaller so you have complete control of how you want or how wide you want your text box as well now let's go back and delete that i don't i'm okay with the width because it's just a demo page now what I want to show you is how you can create those circular text boxes. Again, if you watch my previous videos, every time you want a circular border, you will simply go ahead and plug in border radius. Let's go ahead and do that. So once I zoom in, I'm going to the first division and I'm going and I'm placing the code border radius and you do the same thing for the next one. Go ahead, place in border radius. And now let's go ahead and take a look. And there you go. The first one is nice and circular. The larger the radius, the circular your text or your shadow box is going to be. Now let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the next division, which is right here. Let me zoom in. And I'm going to go ahead and place my border radius. But now instead of pixels, I'm going to give it a percentage. I'm going to say 50%. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. And if you place a border radius in the first division, you also have to make the shadow or the text box circular as well. So the first one is your shadow box. You're making your shadow box circular. And if you don't make your text box circular, one is going to be a square and the other one is going to be a circle. And you don't want that. So you want to go make sure you place your border radius in both the divisions. And this is going to be 50%. Now let's go ahead and see what's going on. And there you have it. As you can see, the text is slightly falling off my circular shadow box. So let me go back here and let me change the padding to 40 instead of 20. Now let's go back and see. Like I mentioned before, the larger the radius, the circular your shadow box is going to be. So you can specify your radius in pixels or in percentage. So that's what it is. Now let me go ahead and give this a width so I can get a nice circle, W-I-D-T-H, uh, let me zoom in. So I'm giving this a width of, let's just say we give it a 500 pixels, what do you think? And then a semicolon. Now let's go ahead and see what happens. Oh, there you go. It's nice and more circular than before. Now, if I reduce the width to 400, maybe it's going to be, oh, there you go, perfect. So it's more circular now. And now, as you can see, my shadow is just um, out of the box there. I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to adjust to 10 and 10. So you can always play with all the coding to see how you want to adjust. So as you can see, now the shadow is nice and snug inside the text box. So you can adjust the shadow, you can adjust the size, you can adjust the width. Now let's say you want to align this entire circular shadow box to the center. You can always do that by playing with your margins. Let me show you how. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle to my HTML. I'm going to zoom all the way in. And the percentage one is my circular one because I can see the border radius is... 50%. Uh, so all you have to do is go ahead and give this more margin to left and right. So the margin is top, right, bottom, left. If you specify one margin, the one margin goes for top, right, bottom, left. If you specify two margins, which is like this, 120 and 150 pixels, the first one is going to be for the top and the bottom. The next one is going to be for the left and the right. 
So I'm just going to specify two. And now let's take a look. And as you can see, this has been moved completely to the center. So let me go back and give it 200 so I can place it all the way in the center. There you go. How cool is that? So we've seen how to change the colors of the foreground, the background, change the borders, change the radius, move it left, right, adjust the width. Now let's go ahead and see how we can change the foreground to gradient. Again, if you have not watched my previous videos, I will leave the link above here or here, but definitely in the description box. Make sure you take a look so you have a better understanding and you enjoy it while you're creating it. So let me toggle back. So I finished with the first two. Now let me move on to the third shadow box. And all I want to do here is I want to create a gradient to my text box. To do that, I will simply copy and paste the text. So instead of background color, so let me go back here. Instead of background color, I'm going to take off the color here. I'm just going to take this off and I'm going to paste this code. Again, this linear gradient has been completely explained in the previous video. I'm going to go ahead and paste the code and I see a double colon there. So make sure you check your coding and now let's go. There you go. Now I have a gradient text box with a weird shadow. Let me go ahead and change that color really quick. Yeah, this is much better. So now I have a gradient to my text box. Again, if you watch the previous video, you'll know how to change the gradient styles from left to right, top to bottom. So this is how you create different shadow boxes. Again, I highly recommend having as many shadow boxes as you want and then go ahead and paste your text inside it. This is how your cool text boxes will look. As promised, I will be creating many more Canvas videos just so that we can have more fun in our classes. In the next session, I will be showing you how to create these pop-up boxes inside your Canvas pages. Maybe you can use them to have a picture pop-up where students can have a picture. They can zoom in and zoom out. This is a rational function. I teach math. Maybe you can have step-by-step -step guidance for them. Step one, step two. And step five could be another picture or you can have the pop-ups inside your page. Maybe this is an elementary class and they're reading this quick brown fox. When they click on it, he has a picture of a quick uh, of a brown fox and then jumps over the lazy dog. Here is a picture of a lazy dog. This could be fun for any age. So the next session is going to be how to create these pop-up boxes inside your canvas pages and inside your paragraphs. I want to give a big shout out to all my viewers and subscribers who are connecting with me through Facebook, commenting, sending me pictures of how their Canvas pages look like, sending me codes, asking me to cross check. I am really enjoying that communication. It is giving me so much of motivation and encouragement and wants, and makes me want to do more videos just for you. I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you learned how to create shadow boxes. If you did, please make sure you like and subscribe. If you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so because as you and me both know this is the time we learn as much as we can so we are ready for the next school year i will leave a link in the description box below for the canvas playlist do not forget to check them out and don't forget to comment in the comment section below if you want me to create a canvas comments course so you can copy it download it and play with the html code let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section like always, happy teaching. Please take care of yourself and I will see you again in my next Canvas training video.